Hey guys and welcome to some pre-wipe tips. I am currently live over on Twitch when this goes up waiting for the wipe. So if you haven't already, come join us over on twitch.tv slash piranha. Also, if you guys find any of these tips useful, please leave us a like down below. And if you guys have got any tips that might help the masses, please leave a comment down below as well. As uh, the best thing is to do is to help each other. So starting off, everyone knows that queue times at the start of wipe is absolutely horrendous. One way of getting around it is selecting every server that you can that is below 140 ping. So right here, if I was to select every single server, so going from my Euro one, which I think is what, five? Right there, and I select every server that I can do. I've now selected some of Russia, USA, the Middle East, and so on. The reason why I say 140 is, yes, the ping kick is actually 180, but 140 just seems to be a decent point. At least in the first couple of days whilst the servers are a bit full and unstable, this might be your best bet. And also the servers can go down in certain regions, whether it's Europe or the USA. There was one point last week when they went down in the States because we were close to the Euro servers. I was perfectly fine where the Americans were having issues. This is one way of kind of avoiding that as well. Also, when you actually come to the update, if you've got really good internet, I would actually recommend totally deleting the game using Geek Uninstaller. Get rid of all of your files. Back up your settings, though, if that's something that you want to keep, as well as your, you know, has all your mouse settings and all that kind of stuff. Doing a total fresh install for Tarkov. The reason being is there can be sometimes some files that are left over from the old Tarkov, even though it does this verify cache and stuff. Um, it can still cause issues, which is something it's just good to be avoided. If you don't have fast internet, then it might not be something you can do. But if you do have decent internet, I would actually recommend you do that. Remember, at the start of why your metabolism and health is super low. So make sure that you hoard food and water. Interchange is obviously the best bet, but we got streets as well as a few other locations that has a decent amount of water. Whenever you see water or food dotted around, eat and drink it. Just be careful that you're not eating mayonnaise because it gets your hydration down to zero as well as condensed milk that does the same thing just keep an eye on it and make sure you're not drinking alcohol as well because i mean it gives you painkiller effects but then it gives you negative effects as well just remember to drink every single bit of food and water it does count in your inventory as well they did patch that we are getting expansion to streets now this is going to be really good i'd recommend that you either go offline mode or do your scav runs to learn these new um, expansions onto these new locations um is is the best way to go out and utilize your um your scavs and of course make sure you jump from your scav to pmc scav to pmc scav to pmc because you can use your scav to get yourself hideout stuff or task items and then use your pmc to progress with your tasks also start of wipe your low levels insurance is cheaper I, it makes no sense in any way possible but the higher you get your rating with prepper therapist and I, I don't know if mechanic does it but your insurance basically the higher that your loyalty level is with the traders the more expensive your insurance is so you want to insure everything at the start of raids and you want to use insurance fraud so insurance fraud is basically dropping your insured packer for one that isn't insured which means that if you were to do that with all of your guns, especially early wipes are pretty good, it means that you're going to get your gun and insurance like two or three days later from Prepper and the boys, and then you can reuse that. And it's basically, I early wipe, I use it as a second inventory, basically. So if you die a lot, it could be something that's very useful for you. Also, when it comes to doing your raids, don't push every single fight. If you don't know this, when you survive a raid, you get a survival bonus. Every time this does it actually multiply and multiply. So when you see some streamers get like, I don't know, Pesty's got like 100,000 and a few other people got really high survival um, XP rates, you actually get more XP the, the, the longer you survive. Also, when it comes to that kind of stuff, you actually want to make sure you headshot as much as you can. Headshot and scavs actually give you double XP compared to um, normal kills on a person. So headshot as much as you can. And when talking about scavs, look at every scab when you press f on a scab if you look down the bottom right you actually get a bunch of xp so that's always something that you want to do just run up loot a scab and then just dip off you don't have to search in the containers but when you look at the xp down below this is what my general rule is okay 
Anything that's under 150 XP, I wouldn't loot the scab. But the moment there's anything that's over 150 XP, so when you press F on that scab and you see it's over 150 XP, I would actually recommend that you loot the scab and search the pockets because at that point is when you get something good, like maybe a key or a Bitcoin or something that can spawn on the scabs. Because if you don't know this, anything can actually spawn on scabs pockets. It is rare, obviously, most of the time it's got bullets and stuff. But scavs can spawn almost anything in the game in their pockets. And when it when we're talking about looting, so this doesn't count towards scavs, but let's say you're looting filing cabinets. Always put everything into your inventory. The reason being is you're actually uh, leveling up your skills whilst you're searching the item. And then putting it into your inventory, you are also searching it. Uh, you're also getting more XP as well. So when it comes to that, you're getting double XP. And then when it comes to the scavs, you also want to put the items on to, into your bag or whatever if you are going to loot them, like including their face shields, their masks, um, bags, weapons, whatever. If you put it on your person, you are leveling your perception when you do that, which is actually one of the tasks that make you here longer. So another thing you want to do is you want to stack your tasks, right? So when it comes to, let's say, for instance, you've got to kill 10 scavs. You got to loot two shotguns. You want to, you need to loot some salaries and you need to kill scavs at night. Let's see, for instance, and scavs on customs. Let's do that. So that's five tasks. If you were to go kill scavs at night, right, on customs, you've just completed three of those because you're killing scavs at night and doing your scav kill task and whilst doing them custom. And then obviously check out the the guns that you loot as well as the salaries for medical spawns. You want to stack as many tasks as you can on top of each other, so it's a lot more efficient. Now, something I want to show you as a bit of a, a bonus is there's a few websites are really good um, for early game. So when it comes to Tarkov.dev, these guys run bots on the flea market to see how much the value of items are. Now, understand that first day of what this is 100% going to be incorrect. It does take him about a week or so to get this up to date and whatnot. So right here, this shows you the value of what you sell to traders. Um, but the one I want to show you is this. It's called Loot Tiers. Now, this shows you the value of the items that you're going to put up on the flea market per, like, per slot. So you can see Bitcoins are 410,000, Kip is 400k, uh, the Wifi Cam is 300, the Dfibs are 300. But these are all the items that you want to be keeping your eyes out for early on when it comes to Tarkov. Again, like I said, it's going to take about maybe a week or so. Maybe come back in a week just to check this website to see if it's working. But if you just want a quick reference to throw on your second monitor, you can be like, oh, the 118 key, that's 100k. That's something that I should definitely be picking up. So that's something that I personally wouldn't pick up because it's it's the 118 key for Dawn's and what's the freaking news? But it's 100k that you wouldn't have had otherwise. Obviously, you've got the obvious ones like, you know, uh, Moonshine, Tetris. The GM counter is currently going for 200k. Uh, what's another word like these gun parts man mpx that's mcx lightweight stock that's 300k the sr25 up receiver the pack i mean we know about the pack but the ar10 cmmg low profile gas box it's just stuff that you might not think about but just coming over here just to have a quick reference to see the ak100 grip 176k on the flea market yes you've got to be level 15 but this could be something that you can hoard if you are coming to the wipe slightly later than everyone else another great website is the Tarkov wiki, the escape from Tarkov.fandom.com wiki. Now, there's two things that are, are, are good about this website is the actual pictures when it comes to the image guys, right? This right here. So this is the hideout one and it shows you all of the items that you need for the hideout. So this is the hardware that you need. These are the tools, electronics, uh, energy elements, and medical and valuables. So this is a really good way of keeping track of everything that you need. Bear in mind that when it comes to the hideout, stuff doesn't actually need to be found in raid. Um, it does. Um, you can actually buy this stuff from the flea market. So it's, it's, this isn't really so much, but it's a good, uh, good idea of what to keep an eye out for when you're doing your tasking. But one of the best ones is the quest one. Or again, the image guides. Right here, this shows you every single item you need for your tasks. One of the most important things is getting yourself a, like a scab jump box early enough where you can actually start hoarding these items. Because dog tags, something that you'd always sell and just not think much of, you need them. Pile of meds, spark plugs, hoses, vases, um, labs key cards. Sometimes we get them and vend them straight away. Um, <laughs> Jaeger needs them, flash drives, a certain key. Uh, when it comes to fence, these are all like tapper items. 
so not so much but then lightkeeper's got some task requirements over there and there's like fabrics as well like this is the kind of stuff that personally i would like not even keep even though it's, it's me and i know everything when it comes to tasking this is a really great resource um the greens are the ones that you need to find and raid and then the gray ones aren't the ones that find and raid there's another picture on here which is this vertical one or horizontal whatever floats your boat um, which shows you all of the items that you actually need to find in raid and it's a lot more easier laid out so these are medical items tech items food items valuables um i guess more tech items don't know why they're not together oh, that's electrical um and then guns and then so on and so forth so these shows you all the items you actually need to find in raid um super water you actually get from the hideout but yeah so these 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 are the items that you need to start holding early game and basically keep to one side in your stash you spawn with a tank battery god it's brilliant so this is definitely stuff that you should um these these resources i will leave links down below to the pictures as they are really good resources and something that you should definitely utilize hopefully you guys found that guide useful if you did don't forget to leave it a like and subscribe also if you're looking for someone to play with or you need help with a task we do have a helpline which is like the sherpa system over at toc.gg which is the outcast we also run some tournaments and all that kind of fun stuff so don't forget to head over there as well so a big thank you to everyone who has been giving me feedback in the latest videos and especially thank you over to the patreons without your support i wouldn't be able to do what i do and a big thank you to justin asdf and freddy for your continued support